One of the crucial principles to learn in InDesign is links. When we create layouts, most of the time we will be bringing in assets into our documents created in other programs like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. Now, these may be raster images, vector images, PDFs, or even other InDesign documents. One of the most important panels to keep an eye on in InDesign is the links panel. This panel represents all the linked elements that you will have within your document, and you're going to need to pay close attention to this panel. This panel is pretty crucial to your workflow. So in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how the links panel works and how you can customize this panel so you can get more detailed information and get complete control of the links in your document. So let's jump into InDesign. So to begin, I want you to open a document so we can focus on links and work with them in context. This document can be found in the downloadable folder that comes with this class. This download folder comes with multiple projects and a ton of assets and resources we will be using in this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder from the description. With the download folder open, click into folder three, document samples, click into folder two, double-sided, click into the accordion fold folder and click to open the Chefistry accordion InDesign document. Now for this document, I'm using the font Montserrat. If you have not already downloaded all the fonts for the course, this is a free font that you can acquire online. To get the font, I would recommend you check out the course fonts page on the course PDF document. This is a list of all the fonts that are used in this document and where to get them. Simply click on the Montserrat link and this will take you straight to where you can download it. Simply close the document, install the font, open it back up again and you should be able to follow along just fine. So in the last video, I recommended an InDesign workspace and demonstrated how to set it up in this way. In this tutorial, we are going to be focusing on the links panel located here in the middle panel group. If you don't have your workspace set up like this, you can either watch the previous video or simply come up to window, scroll down and activate the links panel here. So here is the links panel and I can currently see it contains a list. This is a list of all the linked elements within my document. Every time you place an image into a document, place it into the pasteboard area or in the layout area, it will show up in this panel. What you are seeing here is the default setup of the links panel when you start InDesign. Now keep in mind that the links panel can be customized. For example, I'm going to come to window, come down to workspace, and in here I have a workspace I have prepared earlier called course links. This is a workspace I have set up and saved previously, so you won't see this in your workspace. So I'm just going to click on this and my workspace will change. Though it has not changed massively, what you can see now are these extra properties visible here in the links panel. Starting from the left, I have name, status, page number, color space, actual PPI, and size. Now these are additional property columns that can be activated in the links panel. These are here to clearly display information about an image in the document at a glance. And these are pretty crucial to help you keep on top of your project and maintain the quality you will later need in order to get a document printed. Now, I highly recommend you have these extra property columns visible in your links panel like this. But before I explain why and the benefits, I will quickly show you how to get them here. So first, I'm going to come back to my previous workspace with the default links panel, back up to workspace, down to workspace and click on new space, which we created in the previous video. So now I'm back to the default links panel and we no longer see the properties columns. I'm going to simply come to the top right of my links panel, click the menu and activate the panel options and here you can choose from a vast variety of properties. For now all I'm going to need is the properties mentioned previously so I'm going to go ahead and click to activate the ones I want. I'll click on size, color space and actual PPI. Now while I'm here I can also look at the top of this menu and click the drop down on row size and set this to large rows and then click OK. This will now set my preview thumbnails to be larger and we can see our new tabs. Once you have these loaded, it's up to you what order you want to have them. Here we can click and drag the tabs left or right to change the order, and I'm going to order them like so. So let's go through what each column is and why we need these. First I have name, and this will show the file name and an image item and the little thumbnail to the left. Here you'll also be able to see the file extension. Next I have status. Now this is really important because this will inform you of any issues with your images such as missing links or if they need to be refreshed. Here you will see a warning icon if there are any issues. Next I have page number. This basically states which page the link is on. 
For example, if I drag a link off a page and onto the pasteboard, you will notice the page number changed to PB. This stands for pasteboard, so in instances where you can't find a link, you may have placed it into the pasteboard somewhere. By simply clicking on the page number, it will take you directly to the link in your document so you can find it. Next, I have actual PPI, and this will tell you the resolution of the link. Now, I can't stress how useful this is. If you're composing a document that is going to print, then you will need at least 150 to 300 DPI. If you place an image that is 72 or lower, for example, then this will give you time to address the image straight away before finding out later. Here we can see that all my images are 150 DPI, so really good for print. Next, I have the color space. Again, very useful. As you already know, images can either be RGB or CMYK, now, depending on what your intention is for your document, if it's digital, then you're good to use RGB, but if making layout for print, you may want to make sure all your images are CMYK. However, this can depend on which printer you're working with. They may require all images to be CMYK, but some printers are happy to receive documents with RGB images as they can convert them on their end. In this document, all my images are currently RGB. So last, I have size. This will tell me the document size of the image, there's nothing particularly important about this other than peace of mind and to keep on top of how big some of my images are in terms of file size. So one tip here, if you click on the tab, it will arrange the links by order of largest first or smallest first. You can do this for each tab. So by clicking on the size tab, you can see which images are the largest in your document and also in order of how they appear in your document. So those are the key property columns you can have open to keep on top of your links. Now I want to quickly draw your attention to the bottom of the links panel. With an image selected above, I can see some extra information about the image name, file path, dimensions, and so on. This can give me a good insight if the link is of good quality. And if I look just above the link info area, to the right I have five buttons. These are pretty important and you will need to familiarize yourself with these. Starting from the left, I have the relink from cloud button, the relink from your computer button, then the go to link, refresh and edit original. The relink buttons will enable you to change the link. If I have an image placed in my composition area, but I want to replace it with another one, I can easily do this using this button. Simply click a link you wish to replace, then hit this button and navigate to the new image on your computer. Next to this, you have the go to button. This is convenient if you have a large document with a lot of images, or perhaps a link that is sitting in the pasteboard somewhere. With the link in question selected above, you can click this button and it will take you straight to the link in your composition. The next button is the update link button. Now let's say you had to make a change to an image. For example, if you're working on some document images while your InDesign document was open, but you did not have it on screen. I'm going to minimize InDesign and come into an image in my document assets folder and just open it. With the download folder open, click into folder three document samples, click into the assets folder, click into the PS folder and click to open the Sheffordstree salad bowl image. In Photoshop, I'll just add a black and white adjustment layer. I'll close and save the file. Back into my InDesign document, if we take a look in the links panel, now we can see a warning icon in the status column. And if we navigate to the image in the document, we can see that the image we just changed is still in color. Now in the links panel, this is InDesign telling us that this link has been changed or modified and we can change to refresh the link. If I now press the update link button, the image will now change to the up-to-date state. And we can see that it's now black and white and the warning icon has disappeared. Looking back at the icons at the bottom of the panel, on the far right, I have the edit original button. Now you may find yourself using this button a lot. Once an image is placed into your InDesign composition, there may be times you wish to make modifications to that image on the go. Change the color, create transparency, or just make simple photo manipulations. Let's come back to the image I just changed into black and white. If I want to change it back to color, I can use the selection tool to select the image frame. Now the link will also become selected in the links panel. If I come down to the edit original button and click that, InDesign will open the image in Adobe Photoshop. So I'll toggle off the black adjustment layer to go back to color. Then if I close and save the image, come back into InDesign, you will then notice the image actually update and I can see the changes I just made, easy. So that's a brief introduction to the links panel in InDesign and some of its functionality. This is one of the most important panels in InDesign to help your workflow and keep on top of your linked assets 
and I find myself keeping an eye on this one regularly. So that is how you can customize your links panel with a brief insight on how to manage your assets inside InDesign. Later in the course, we will cover links and how to manage them in more depth. But for now, this is good to know to get you started. Now, another crucial feature to learn in InDesign is pages. Like the links panel, another important panel we will be using in InDesign is the pages panel. Now, InDesign is a desktop publishing program and one of its most powerful features is to develop multiple page documents. And this is all managed in the pages panel. In the next video, we will be taking a closer look at the pages panel and how to manage multiple pages in our documents. So see you in the next video.